Good morning, everyone. Today, we're going to start by exploring Montezuma Well, as well as the ancient ruins that lie within. Join us for an all-new adventure, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Previously on my Arizona Adventures travel series, we explored the ancient cliffside dwelling known as Montezuma Castle. This multi-level structure featured a third of a mile hiking trail only 36 minutes away from Sedona. In this video, we will continue 20 minutes north on I-17 to a subunit of the National Monument known as Montezuma Well. A half a mile loop trail surrounds the well, providing several outstanding observation points. Montezuma Well is a sinkhole, a collapsed underground limestone cavern filled with water. More than a million gallons of water a day flow continuously, providing a lush, verdant oasis in the midst of the surrounding desert grassland. Montezuma Well is over 350 feet wide and 55 feet deep and sits in an elevation of 3,618 feet. The well is a unique ecosystem with several plants and animals found nowhere else on Earth. There are leeches, amphipods, water scorpions, and turtles that lived in this closed ecosystem. This remarkable habitat is perhaps due to the receiving and discharging of large quantities of warm water, approximately 76 degrees Fahrenheit, that enters through underground springs keeping the environment within the well very stable. Due to the high concentration of dissolved carbon dioxide, 600 times higher than most natural aquatic environments, it affords unique conditions for scientific studies of plant and animal interactions not found anywhere else. The ruins of several prehistoric cliff dwellings are scattered in and around the rim of the well. Their inhabitants belonged to several indigenous American cultures that are believed to have occupied the Verde Valley between 700 and 1425 CE, known as the Southern Sanagua peoples. The earliest of the ruins located on the property, with the exception of the irrigation canal, a pit house in the traditional Hohokam style, dates back to about 1050 CE. More than 50 countable rooms are found inside the park boundaries, it is likely that some were used for purposes other than living space, including food storage and religious ceremonies. The Sanakwa people and possibly earlier cultures intensively farmed the land surrounding the well, using its constant outflow as a reliable source of irrigation. Beginning about 700 CE, the well's natural drainage into the immediately adjacent Wet Beaver Creek was diverted into a man-made canal running parallel to the creek, segments of which still conduct outflow today. The prehistoric canal, estimated at nearly seven miles in length, likely drained into a network of smaller lateral canals downstream, supplying perhaps as much as 60 acres of farmland with water. All right, guys, we are here at Montezuma Well. This place is absolutely incredible. It's only a third of a mile paved and signed trail. It leads you up a short hill and down to the rim of this naturally occurring spring in the desert. It's kind of like a desert oasis here. So you guys can see we're right here at the parking lot and we just have to go up here to the overlook. And then you could actually walk down to get closer to the ruins as well as the seven mile irrigation ditch that was constructed here thousands of years ago. This should be an awesome place too. A lot of history here. I believe these, the uh, the people that indigenous people that lived here, they have some of the most intricate uh, woven baskets and everything. And it says that their baskets match some of our uh, like threading that was constructed today in clothing. Right. Yep, so here just over the top of this ridge lies a desert oasis. A natural well with a seemingly inexhaustible supply of water. So Montezuma Well is significant in its cultural meanings and natural uniqueness. Ahead lies 50 million gallons of water. Apparently there's a lot of uh, snakes here in the summertime. But we never see any wildlife, it seems like. 
Although we saw a coyote last night. Oh, this is cool. All right, guys, we're getting closer now to the well. This should be awesome. Oh, it's kind of steaming too. It's at a constant 74 degrees, the ranger said. Look at this. Oh my God. There's the dwellings over there. Look at that. <laughs> that is so cool. By the way, they're also not sure exactly how deep the well is. Yeah, it has a false bottom. It's like a liquid sand layer. There's also uh, non-blood-sucking leeches in here, mud turtles, anthropods, and uh, ducks. There's some ducks down there as well. So beautiful. Jeez. There's also a trail that takes you down 150 yards to the bottom. We're gonna go do. All right, you can see the ruins behind me. Absolutely incredible. Couldn't imagine living there. That'd be a quite the view. They said there's 50 rooms, right? Yeah, there's 50 rooms here. Really cool place. Now I'll showcase some of these signs later and read the information. This is really nice. guys and I believe it's like 300 some feet or 300 uh, feet across and then like 100 feet wide was the dimensions of the well all right we're gonna go down here guys to the Swale ruin 150 yards down Travertine cliffs. Once we get down to the bottom too, we'll be able to see the uh, drainage where the well actually drains out. What did the ranger say? I believe 1.5 million gallons of water is yes. filtered out of here yes. every day. This would be a great place to live though. They do cotton here. Sweet yeah, cotton. they use the irrigation canal for agriculture, cotton, squash. squash, and all kind of stuff. Oh, this is a nice picture. You get to see the trail and everything. There's like little divots in the rock. I love this traffic. Oh, travertine's nice. They have that at Yellowstone, remember? Yeah. It is so quiet out here. Look at that. There's one of those rattlesnake signs. Very peaceful place. Little cactus, prickly pear cactus growing on the rocks there. Once we get closer to the water on that irrigation canal, I'm going to fill it because it's supposed to be very clear. Oh, look at this. This is cool. Oh my God. There's the cliff dwelling, one of them. 
That's the cave. Yeah, that's the cave. There's uh, bats here as well, guys. It says this cave is a critical habitat for some very small hunters. Look at that. This cave is used by Townsend's, Townsend's big-eared bats, which look like this. And then also here, guys, there's some uh, 1800s graffiti, as you guys can see. Roth Rock over there from Phoenix. That's amazing, isn't that? You see any bats in there? This is probably the closest we've ever been to a cliff dwelling. Let's go down here, guys, get a closer look. Oh, wow, look at that water. So there's a continuous supply of water that supports the well um, here. You guys can see this little diagram. So the water kind of percolates up through. There's a liquid sand bottom here. And then as you can see, it filters out down here into Wet Beaver Creek as well as the irrigation canal, the seven mile long one they constructed. That is beautiful. It says the water moves through a 150 foot long underground passageway through the porous travertine. Oh, that's beautiful. All right, guys, we just left that little grassy stream area, the runoff area. We're going to keep going here. Here's some more uh, cliff dwelling room sections you could see over here. As well as the 1800s graffiti from 1896 over here. Heflin and Griffin over here, 1891. Wow. There's another close up. Ah, okay. All right, guys, we're going to make our way back up. Because there's a uh, there's another trail that gets you closer to the irrigation ditches or irrigation canal, the seven mile long one. It's not that cold. It's nice. It's not bad. Plus, if I film on the way back, you guys can see the layout of this trail. It's really cool. Isn't that cool? That's a nice shot too. Sun's hitting the travertine over there. Thank you. 
could hear the water in Beaver Creek over there too. Yeah, the sun's coming out now, it looks nice. Yeah, I know, and I... Look at this, guys. The inside walls of the well have many natural alcoves and ledges where softer rock is eroded, providing an ideal location for one room houses here. Look at that reflection. That's a nice shot. All right, we're making our approach on another set of ruins here. Did they say these have been reconstructed? They were. Yeah. To preserve them. But probably all these stones are a part of the dwellings. That is really cool. They what? To make flour. A form of into meal, baked into cakes. They use the for, seeds up here in the tree? This mesquite is what they use for barbecuing. Yeah, mesquite wood. Mesquite sap was used as candy, resin, and adhesive. Jeez. Really? Is there any seeds on there? Yeah, it has passed. It has yeah, passed. passed. Fall. Here, the river, it's flowing. Beaver Creek. So we are in the Verde Valley watershed here, part of the Colorado Plateau. Nourished by the Verde River watershed, which drains more than 6,600 square miles of Arizona, the Verde Valley has provided a sanctuary for thousands of years. It's beautiful. It's an oasis in the desert. Oh, prickly pears, it's talking about that sign. We're making our way down this path now. I think it leads to the irrigation canal. All right, guys, here's the path. This is the well outlet. It's called 85 yards down here. I'm so happy this, the sun came out. I know, isn't this? Look at this. Reminds you of Allegheny uh, National Forest a little bit. This is, I can't believe they did that seven mile long irrigation ditch. Yes. Imagine the strength it took to have that, to do that. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, for sure, for sure. Look at that poison ivy sign. <laughs> Look at this, guys. I know. Look at this. Oh, the trail's closed up the head. Looks like it got washed out. Here's some video of the trail that got washed out up here. So it looks like this is as far as we're gonna go. Really a beautiful place. I love those sycamore trees. They're really cool.
too. This is a good shot. Now we're just walking back. You can see all the travertine pieces scattered around the desert. All right guys, you guys can see there's a donation box at the end of the trail. So I'm gonna contribute a little bit here, just a five. And that's gonna do it for us. All right, so thank you for watching and we'll see you on our next stop here. All right guys, our final stop here at Montezuma Well is the Pit House Ruin. Short trail too. I like that purple colored stuff. <clears throat> oh, it's protected, look. Yeah, I know. Jeez, look at this. That's pretty cool. Jeez. Yeah, I'm gonna go read them. Let's go see what this is about, guys. So it says, people of the past adapted their buildings to the land, finding many ways to construct homes that were secure, functional, and comfortable in this climate. So this is what the pit house looked like. It had like a some uh, wooden pillars holding it up with the dome roof, and then an exhaust for the smoke. That's pretty cool. The two largest holes in the dirt floor held the main roof support timbers. The holes around the edge reveal the outline of the structure where the wall per posts were placed in the ground. There's two, two holes right there. Yeah. Pretty cool stuff. And over here it says, for three weeks in 1958, park neighbors and volunteers from Camp Verde joined Dr. David Berternitz in the Museum of Northern Arizona to excavate this pit house. Then they constructed this uh, beautiful covering to protect it and preserve it for future generations. Yeah, probably. Pretty cool. Thank you guys for watching our adventure today to Montezuma Well in Arizona. It was an absolutely incredible place and really surprising. You definitely have to make the stop here if you're near Camp Verde or uh, Lake Montezuma, Arizona. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you on our next adventure.